What's going on guys, we've got the mandatory mask and we are working on a 2018 Mazda CX-3. We're going to be replacing the factory radio with a 10 inch display. That system runs Android, it has uh, Apple CarPlay built in, Android Auto, and it runs Android OS so you can download apps directly to the unit. It will go through the whole install and we're also adding a reverse camera. So I'll give you a quick rundown on how to do that but we won't be videoing that one today. And yeah, let's jump into it. All right, there is the 10 inch display. That's on a singled in chassis. And then next to that, so we've got a little bit of wiring here. Uh, we've got a controller. This goes in, in the center console where currently there's a little cubby. And then on this side, we have the wiring side of things. So a lot of this stuff is retention stuff. It'll be AUX retention, uh, video inputs here, GPS antenna. So this is a USB retention to keep the genuine USB port. We have more inputs. And plug and play harness and CAN bus module. So this is how steering wheel controls, all that sort of stuff will work. We've got the USB and AUX inputs. And that's about it really. And we'll go through all this and how it all works. All right, first thing we want to do is remove the factory radio. All right, now that the head unit is out, we can start looking at some of the wiring side of things and we can start plugging in the right plugs. Okay, too, so now if you notice that doesn't have a corresponding plug, it's fine, you don't need to use it, but just make sure you look inside and actually make sure there's nothing there for it. Right, then we can go antenna, and the USB retention. So we did have one it was for that plug, it was this one here, so that's your AUX input, which is down here by the USB, which you can't see right now. So on this loom here from the module we've got a, a video and AUX input so we can use the AUX for here so that way if you use AUX in the car by the 3.5 mil it will still work GPS antenna this is a good opportunity to do that now find somewhere sort of deep in the dash but nice and high where you can stick stick that antenna okay right about here so on this side there's a flat sort of piece right about there so with the car play USB, what we want to do, one side will plug into the module, and then we've got a CarPlay and a, an, an external, another USB. So we'll use the CarPlay to work with the genuine side, which means that's going to go to the retention. And then your secondary USB, you can run that wherever you want, or you can just not use it at all, but it's good to have. This little bad boy is for the reverse camera, so we'll keep that. And these are your outputs, so if you're going to do an amplifier, uh, that's also got video out, You've got all your speaker outputs, subwoofer outputs, two video outputs. Pretty cool. Okay, now what we can do is make this look nice. Okay guys, so that's the wiring done. Um, we've got our USB input powers. There's a couple bits of extra wiring here. Uh, we won't completely tape them up just yet, just in case we need any of it. Um, AUX input, antenna, GPS antenna, and camera, which we'll do probably towards the end. Um, and for the plug and play side of things, that's pretty much it. Now what we need to look at is the center console. Oh, that was so much easier than I thought. I was expecting screws. Okay, so that literally just pulls up. And then on the underside of this, there's one, two, three screws. We'll undo those. And then we can pop that out. And then we're left with a hole, but that's where the new piece will go. Boom, have a look at that. Tell me that isn't amazing. Screws on with the same screws, same mounting hardware. Um, and then there is a plug that we need to run to this, so I'll show you that. Here is the new screen, guys. On the front of it, we do have a little plug with an extension lead harness. That runs down to here and plugs into our little controller. Before we go too far, We'll test it because we do need to add some extra wiring and we do need to clean this up a little bit more. But just get it sort of in place, right, like so. Oh, hello. It looks so good, the screen. Ba-boom. So first things I always like to test, radio. Okay, now we can hear sound, which is good. So we can go, um, we can check, G uh, far out. I'll get it in a minute. We can check radio reception. Radio code of practice. 
which has been registered by the Australian Communications and Media Authority. Alright, beautiful. So steering wheel controls are working. Very important. Um, and then what we can do is also just... Alright. Look at that. Navigation button. Volume. I'm happy with it. It's good. Always love testing, testing, testing. It just stopped right as it booted up. Look at that. Oh, guys. That's sick. Alright. I'm going to get the camera done, and then we're going to touch base, and we'll finish this install. And we'll go through it and see how the system works all the way. All right, now you can actually see here, uh, filming under direct sunlight is the worst. So put my jumper on the windscreen. Now I've run the camera, plugged it into the camera USB. There she is again. Now what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to run it here. And I'm going to meet my hand down here where the glove box is. And what you can get through there very easily is heaps of space. I've just got my hand all the way through. Um, and then we can put the screen in. Oh, my mask was on. And then we can look at running this to the center area for that plug. So when mounting this, you've got two little feet that click into the dash and then you've got the 10 mils. But what you want to do is underneath the chassis, there's a metal plate and that needs to sit the, the radio body needs to sit on that to make sure there's no wiring underneath it otherwise the screen will sit forward like this and it won't sit nice. We're going to use the clips from the original radio. So what I'm thinking for this is we've got the wiring down here. You can go behind and you can remove this panel. So that just pulls off. Then the, you can run the wiring up behind here, in here, and then you can probably almost snake or tuck your hand up and get it right into there because it's only a very short distance and then when you pull it through it'll pull itself up into the middle of this panel so hopefully that, that makes sense done nice and easy um so run it under here like i said put, met, put it through there met my hand up here and then pulled on it and it's pulled itself sort of up into this area and now it's all good to go. You can put this panel back on. There's a little foot right there. And then clips. Right, how good is that? One-handed. And now we can look at putting the center console back together. All right, guys, have a look at that. That is so awesome. So much better. So this is what we had before. This little pocket. Now we just double check everything, make sure it's all lined up correctly, all the clips are in. Alright guys, center console's back in properly, everything's all lined up, cleaned up, nice. Now we just screw the screen down. Alright guys, have a look at that. Isn't that awesome? Alright, boom guys, there it is. Now, these radios... Android units are amazing because now you've got the big screen, all your factory features will still work, which in this case it wasn't a lot because it didn't have a screen, but some cars that have vehicle settings and all that sort of stuff, that all gets retained. Um, then you've got your radio. I'm just going to use the little controller that we added right here to show you that volume is working there. We can change the station. Okay, we can press navigation and bring us into na uh, Google Maps. You can also reassign that button if you wanted to do something else. Uh, you can press home here to bring you to the home screen. And steering wheel controls also work. And you can, of course, hit the home button and then you've got pages of apps. And um, to give you an idea, you can use... YouTube is a great app, so um, whether you're driving or not, the kids are in the back and they want to watch the screen. Obviously, the driver does not watch that. We don't recommend that. Uh, video maps all right you can go scroll down here go to wi-fi there and so you can search a wi-fi network so example on my phone i could turn my personal hotspot on and then connect this to the personal hotspot then we have internet access directly in this on the screen and that way if we did want to go to say youtube it would load um, and then not only that you can go Facebook's here as well. Front camera input if you wanted to use it. Play Store. So the 
the options are endless. Once there's a network that you sign in, you can download Netflix, all sorts of crazy stuff. Um, and overall, it's just a really nice looking unit. It looks awesome. It looks so much better than before. Um, now, this is what I use the most in my car. So, in this vehicle, the factory USB is located right here. So we can just go ahead and plug that in. Plug in our device. It will come up straight away. And then here we have Apple CarPlay. Just want to make sure you can see that. That's a full HD screen. It's amazing. It looks so good. Go Spotify. Start playing some music. And there you go. Just using the little control once again on the in the center console. Okay, can press home. Unplug the phone, and that is it. And the last thing I forgot to show you guys was the camera. So once you pop it into reverse, it goes camera, and then when you go out of reverse, and it goes back to the normal screen. Guys, that is the job done. Um, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Sorry about the video quality. It's really hard filming under direct sunlight. It's like uh, the worst filming conditions, but this is something that I really wanted to film. Um, and yeah, very straightforward install. I think this is very DIYable for most people. And yeah, like I said, any questions, just drop them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.